Hello, in today's video I'm going to be helping you discover how much you should be charging realistically an hour for the services you provide. All that's coming up after this. Pater, pater. Thanks for joining me again. If you like the content we produce, then please think of subscribing and clicking the bell icon and you'll be notified of when we produce new content. Also, a comment and a like would be much appreciated. Anyway, on to today's video. Do you know exactly how much you need to be charging your customers per hour to make a profit at the end of the year so that, you know, you keep you make a living, you also have a little bit of profit and you're covering all your running costs and overheads well if you don't watch this video and uh, i'll share to work it out but before we start i need to go to the spreadsheet so uh give me a couple of minutes and i'll get the spreadsheet up spreadsheet spreadsheet where are you okay there's one or two ways of doing this we can start with your overheads and how much it costs you a month to live or we can go to the business and then work out the business overheads. I always think it's best to work out these costs first because you know what costs you've got each month. So if you go through these and fill out, you know, you're shopping for a month, your rental mortgage, you know, all these, it will give you a total per month to live. So it's costing £2,117 a month to live. Over a year, that's it. Not more or less twenty eight grand is costing you to live. That is, you know, nights out, takeaways, holidays, you know, council tax, water rates, gas, just basically everything you need to live. So as long as you're making that after tax, then you're laughing. You you can afford to live. So we've got that. That'd be the first thing to work out. Work out how much it costs you per month and then per year to um, stay alive, really. <laughs> so once we've got that in place, we can then move over to this little area. In 2020, there was eight bank holidays, but uh, I was going to get involved. I was going to mention the coronavirus, but probably that's going to be a bit messy. So right, let's just stick to making out that it's a normal year, which it isn't, but let's try and make out that it is. So in a normal year, we'd have eight bank holidays. Most people have 20 days holiday a year. So with the bank holidays, you get 28 days holiday. 104 weekends, so I've taken out the weekends. So we've got 132 days a year that are non-productive, either with weekends or holidays. So with that said, that leaves us then with 234 days a year that are productive. 366 there before someone tells me because uh it's a leap year we get an extra day get an extra day to earn some money so that leaves us with 234 days a year to earn some money now how many hours in a day are you going to work now most people say eight hours but we're at work for eight hours not all those eight hours are productive though so i say six you know, because you get there, you stop for lunch, maybe have a cup of tea, maybe talk to the customer. So I'd say out of eight, out of eight hours a day, six are productive. I have heard in the past that if you've got a crew and you're running a bigger company, you know, like a building company, then, you know, the productive days an hour are five because you've got different trades talking to each other and you know what it's like when you're on site. So anyway, I base it on six. So in a year, that gives you 1,404 hours a year to make some money. So with that said, that's a figure we're going to be using later on. Then what you need to do, run through all these expenses for the month. And then we just times them by 12 to get the total here. So that will, once we fill those all out, marketing, advertising, training, uh, trade associations, public liability, you know, 
all the usual stuff. That is our, uh, that's how much it's going to cost us for all this a year. £11,100. However, another thing to bear in mind is that because we use stuff, stuff's going to have to be replaced. So you may want a new van, or at least a deposit on a new van. So, I mean, I've said there, uh, 15 grand towards a new van. Now, you may want to replace your van every five years. So if you put five in there, there you go. There's three grand a year you've got to be saving on top of everything else. Also, you might want to replace some tools. You know, you've got, if you're using dustless sanders, they're going to eventually need replacing. So, you know, would it be, it'd be worth contributing to that each year. So say you want, you know, you spend a thousand pound on tools a year. So add that in. Also, you're going to need a new laptop or a new desktop because technology and stuff like that. So I'd say you're going to be wanting to spend about two grand every three years. Does that make sense? So there you go. So that brings up the total to 15,700 and a few pounds. So that's for everything you need. That's that's not your money. That's what it costs you to run your business. Now, how much do you want to bring in a month? Bear in mind, this is where it starts making more sense now. If you go to the other place, you need £2,100 a month to, um, to stay alive. So I'd say, let's be a little bit more generous. Let's say two and a half grand. There you go. So if we if we say we're looking earning two and a half grand, that's thirty thousand pound a year. That might be reasonable. So with all that said, this calculates then your rate per hour. So you've got to charge eleven pound. What's that? Twenty three for your overheads for all this. You're actually you're actually on twenty one pound thirty seven an hour. And also, what people do forget to do is add in some profit. Most companies. Their profit is between, I don't know, 20, 15, 20, 25%. So you need to add that in as well because, you know, we're all in it to make some money. I know customers don't like us making a profit, but we need to add that in. So basically, your hourly rate should be about £40 an hour. And I know what you're saying. Oh, well, I can't, I can't charge that. Well, I mean, when you look at it like this, you, you sort of really got to haven't you because 2100 you know you've, there's not a lot of there there's not a lot you know meat on the bone it's up to you now this is the interesting one is when you come to pay your tax at the end of the year so we're on £30,000 that's our hourly rate without the overheads but by the time we've paid tax national insurance we are actually losing money that's what it's costing us to run a household a month, a year. And that's what we're earning a year after tax. So, obviously, our two and a half grand a month is not enough. So let's up that a little bit. Let's make it two seven. See if that's going to get us out of uh, trouble. No, you see, still not enough. So I reckon our three grand was probably about right. Have a look. Still not quite enough. So yeah, that was two nine. So two nine fifty. Let's give that a go. There you go. We're barely covering. Yeah, we've got three hundred pounds spare. Not even a decent night out. So as I said, three grand as we were. Admittedly, we're getting all this covered in the cost, but. At the end of the day, it's what you're actually taking home after tax. You know, so you, there you go. You'll be, you've got to be charging £45 an hour. I mean, admittedly, you can trim some of these costs down here and have a look at these and see what you can do here. But there's not a great deal there to um, maybe £200 a month on nights out, especially now. No one's going anywhere. But do you know what I mean? On a normal, on a normal month... But yeah, it's just a matter of um, playing around with these figures and just, you know, getting them to work. I mean, you can take all this section out here. You know, you're going to save yourself quite a bit a year. What's that, four, 
just over four and a half million just save yourself a year. But eventually, some when, somewhere, somehow, you're gonna have to get a new van. You're gonna have to replace your tools, and you're gonna need you're gonna need a new PC or a laptop. So why not in follow, you know include those costs in the in your hourly rate? And another thing is when a customer does moan and say, "Well, you know, you're expensive," you'll actually know that you're not expensive because you can't afford to work any cheaper than that figure because you've taken the time to sit down and work all this out because people do customers do moan and yeah you know, oh, you're expensive and you well no i'm not expensive it takes long run and run through it and show them exactly where they where where your costs are coming from. you know you haven't got to justify your prices but at least you'll be reassured when you come to price that you know where you're going so once you've got your hourly rate this will then um, link in to the other video I've done about timing yourself for working, you know, so you time yourself to paint the door, time yourself to do a meter of skirting, this will all become clear because this then, this crux of the hourly rate will form your prices for painting walls, painting ceiling, well basically painting anything. It's the foundation of getting your pricing right. It's starting here. Well, I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please click like and subscribe. Also, click the bell icon. Leave some messages down below and I'll do my best to answer any queries or questions you've got. Um, Till next time, take care and I shall speak to you guys soon. Cheers. If you found this interesting, you might have found that video interesting too. If not, this one might be worth a watch.